Hello everyone, so welcome to my class. So this time we are going to explore the fascinating world of the stars and the patterns they create in the night sky. So let us discover the wonders of the constellation together now. Are you ready everyone? I know that you are all excited but before that let us first talk about what we are going to learn. So after the discussion, you are going to infer some characteristic of the stars based on the characteristic of the sun. You may also infer that the arrangement of the stars in a group or constellation does not change for a very long period of time. You may also observe how the position of the constellation changes in the course of a night and you may show which constellation may be observed at different times of the year using the what we call nodal. So this time, we are going to discuss about the constellation. Are you familiar with the star of Bethlehem? Yes, very good students, no? It is a star that appeared when Jesus was born. In the Gospel of Matthew, specifically in Matthew 2, verse 1 to 12, the story of the star of Bethlehem guiding the three wise men going to the birth of Jesus. So today, it plays an important role in the Christmas story and continues to be a symbol of hope and light for many people today. Have you tried to look at the night sky? So when we look at the night sky, we see thousands of stars. But a person can see only 3,000 stars on the average. But did you know that in reality, there are approximately 400 billion of stars in our galaxy? And there are about 170 billion galaxies. So, can you imagine that? So, what are stars and how do they form? Well, when I say star, so that is astronomical object comprising a luminous spheroid of plasma held together by its gravity. Star also appear to move in the night sky from east to west. And the stars differ in many ways. So they are different in sizes, brightness, and color. So let us talk about it one by one. The sizes. Can you really tell the size of the star just by looking at it? Let's take a look on this. So which do you think is bigger? Is it the Sirius or the Rigel? Maybe some of you will tell that the Sirius is bigger than the Rigel. But, Sirius which appears bigger than the Rigel is actually very small compared to Rigel. Did you know that the Sun is the closest star to Earth? The average distance between the Sun and the Earth is about 93 million miles or 149.6 million kilometers. So if we are going to compare the sun from the other stars, it is relatively small star compared to some stars that we can see at night. And as I said a moment ago, that it appears larger only because it is closer to us. The brightness. The brightness of the star as seen from the earth depends on two factors. Those are the distance and the actual brightness are also known as the absolute brightness. The star brightness as seen from the Earth is its apparent brightness. Apparent brightness depends on how far a star is from the Earth. For example, Rigel is almost 100 times farther away from Sirius. In terms of apparent brightness, Sirius is about twice as bright as Rigel. Sirius looks very bright when viewed from Earth because it is closer to Earth. That is why some of you think that Sirius is larger than the Rigel. The color Stars come in a variety of colors, so which indicates their temperature. The temperature of star is closely related to its color. So let's take a look on this. We have the blue, which is considered as the hottest, so that is the Rigel, which has 25,000 Kelvin in temperature. 
followed by the Sirius, which is blue to white, which has 10,000 Kelvin in temperature. The next one is yellow, which is the sun, which has 6,000 Kelvin in temperature. The next one, we have the orange, which is the aldebaran. And the last one, which is considered as the coldest, is the red, which is the Antares. Have you seen a group of stars? Do you see image of animals, human, or objects? If your answer is yes, you're already familiar with the constellation. But what is constellation and how do constellation form? Well, they don't form in the sense that we normally think of things forming. Instead, they are product of our imagination. A constellation is a group of stars that appears to form a pattern or picture. Based on the studies, there are 88 constellations that can be viewed in the clear night sky. 48 were named by the ancient Greeks, but the remaining 40 were named later on. Constellations are seen at different times of the year because of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. As the Earth revolves around the Sun, the position of the Sun in the sky appears to change. And as a result, the position of the star relative to the Sun also appears to change. This apparent change in the position of the star is due to the fact that the stars are very far away from the Earth and therefore appear to be fixed in the sky. The position of the constellation also changes over a long periods of time due to the phenomenon known as precision. Precision is caused by the gravitational pull of the Moon and the Sun on the Earth's equatorial bulge. Three categories of constellation. Circumpolar. It is a constellation that can be viewed all year because they are located close to the Earth poles and do not set below the horizon. And these are the Draco, Sipius, Cassiopeia, Ursa Minor, and Ursa Major. Zodiacal. These are the constellations through which the sun passes or stars located in the path of the sun. This group of constellations are mainly composed of animals, which is why the ancient Greeks called it Circle of Animals. And these are the Libra, the Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, the Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, and Virgo. Seasonal. So those are constellations that change or shift in and out of view based on the time of the year. And these are Aquila. Cygnus, Lyra, Sagittarius, Scorpius, Opitius, Hercules. And here are the famous constellations. So what do you see? Yes. That is Pegasus. It is also known as the Wing Horse. It is a prominent constellation in the northern sky named after a wing horse in a Greek mythology. How about this? What do you see? Very good. So, it is Cassiopeia. It is also known as the Seated Queen. It is a constellation of the northern sky. It can be seen at its clearest from September to early November. 
How about the next one? Do you see a man with sword and shield? If yes, this one is the what we call Orion. It is also known as the Hunter. It can be seen in both the Northern and Southern Hemisphere. It most visible in the evening sky from January to March. In the Northern Hemisphere, it indicates the coming of cold season. Orion is also known as the Balatic in the Philippines. The constellation is used by the Philippine ancestor to determine the beginning of their harvest and the planting periods. So what do you see? Do you see a dog? These are the Canis Major and Canis Minor. They are the hunting dogs of Orion. It can be seen in the Northern Hemisphere from December to March and in the Southern Hemisphere from November to April. It represents the bigger dog, which is following Orion. Canis Minor represent the smaller dog. It's also known as the Malara in Matigsalog Manobo. It is used by Matigsalog in Manobo Bokidnon to interpret when to stop planting. What do you see? Yes. This one is also known as the Great Bear and the Lesser Bear. So it is known as the Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. Again, they are also known as the Great Bear and the Lesser Bear. Two of the most commonly viewed major constellation in the Northern Hemisphere. It can be seen all year and at any hour of the night. Ursa Major is the third largest constellation in the sky and the largest constellation in the Northern Hemisphere, wherein the Orsa Minor, its most important star is the what we call Polaris, which is also known as the current North Star, which has been used by the sailors for navigating at sea. The next one. So what do you see? Yes, it looks like a bull. So it is Taurus. It is also known as the bull. It is visible in both the northern and southern hemisphere. It passes through the sky from November to March, but the constellation at its most visible in January. It is a large and prominent constellation in the northern hemisphere winter sky. It is used by Matigsalag Manobo of Bukidnon to determine the clearing of forests. And these are one of the famous or famous constellations. Whether you're an astronomer studying the cosmos or simply a stargazing enjoying the beauty of the heavens, constellations continue to inspire us with their mystery and wonder. So next time when you look at the stars, take a moment to appreciate the rich history and meaning behind the constellation above. And always remember, class, that the constellation were not just the product of human imagination, but a reflection of the grandeur and wisdom of our creature. And that's all for today. Thank you, everyone. Hope you learned a lot. I star you!